And in in your in your district, are you hearing from from parents and from from teachers and principals, perhaps that how, how are they feeling about the new administration? Is there is there optimism? Is there hesitancy? There, uh, there's optimism, but I think um, most people are saying let's wait let's wait and see, mm-hmm. because there's so much anticipation about a progressive agenda that people don't know where where to go with that. So believe it or not, with the old regime, people didn't like it, but they knew what they were going to get. So you get some of that with parents. They say, hey, you know, I didn't particularly care for it, but we knew consistently we were going to get this. Right. Um, so it's the uncertainty that, that resides in people that makes them anxious. Mm-hmm. So I don't, peop- I don't think people know yet exactly what they're going to get. So they're, they're, they're cautiously optimistic. Right, 100 days in, there has, you know, we're, we're waiting on a lot of specifics and new policy points, which I'm sure will become. And, and we live in a very microwavable society, right. so people aren't willing to, to, to wait things out. Mm-hmm. They, will, they want you to say it, do it, you know, get it done immediately. And, uh, you know, things like the Department of Education uh, don't have a fast track uh, for them. So any new implementations takes 18 months, if you're lucky, to see any uh, uh, residual effect of that. And I, I mean, I, I, my background is in education. And so, you know, I, I, I've been saying to people with the new regime coming in, just sort of, you know, if there's going to be, um, if there's going to be, major policy changes, they're probably not going to go into place for at the earliest next school year. For Absolutely. Most part, right? So Absolutely. that patience part is, is tough, you know. And, and it's, it's funny because one of the things about the bill that, give, that gave us a tremendous sense of urgency was the fact that we're looking at between 1,000 and 4,000 students uh, being integrated into the school with the universal pre-K. Mm. So uh, conceivably unsafe buildings now receiving new students. And the, special, the, the, the thing that's special about those new students is these new students haven't been in institutional settings before. So you got four-year-olds, universal pre-K, they're usually coming from home or very small institutional settings, whether it's daycare or something. So you're integrating them into a system that's really not ready to receive them Mm safety-wise. So the way the makeup of the school is, you'll have two safety agents at the main entrance, and then you'll subsequently have three, four, or five other entrances and exits that are unmanned. And it's already been proven, not anecdotally, but, but statistically, that that's on the rise Mm -hmm. and that students in my district, I have two schools, PS 59 and 305, which are great schools for my district, but they just don't have the capacity to man those doors. Now, this would seem like something if it goes through and is a mandate from the council that shouldn't be locked up in any real bureaucratic problems. But I think anytime people think about city construction or the DOE, they worry that, again, things would take a long time. I mean, do you think that this is the type of project that could be sort of fast-tracked? Because it, it can absolutely be fast-tracked. So, you know, in my naivete, we say, I told you, 59 did it with $1,000, right. right? I would be certainly willing to leverage some of my discretionary funding mm-hmm. for schools that immediately needed it we would be able to do that. Other council members that I spoke to said that they would leverage their subsequent pots of money to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but we, we're dealing with an, uh, uh, an institutional setting that's not accustomed to that quick action. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so... So this money wouldn't be. necessarily have to come through the city, D, the DOE... The, the way uh, we've seen it, there's a sense of urgency and it shouldn't. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But, you know, okay. well, my know, naivete tells practice. me that, hey, there's a problem. Right. Let's go fix the problem. However, there are several layers I'm finding um, that you have to go through to get things done. I just don't think our children, we can leverage time in and around these issues. I mean, this, those five students that left, left this year. We're only four months into the year. Right. And five students have left subsequent to Avante. Right. So your goal would be as many schools as possible for day one of school next year? Absolutely. We, we would want to work... Uh, we would want to work through this month all the way till September. And we believe that that's enough of a time frame to alarm all the doors in the entire city. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing is we didn't ask for every single door in the entire city. We left out middle schools and high schools. Right. We only want buildings that house the most vulnerable, mm-hmm. which is um, pre-K through the fifth grade and District 75 schools. Mm-hmm. So we've already probably cut the amount of alarms in half. So we, we, think, we think it's doable, but again, I'm very naive, I'm young, I'm green, I'm idealistic, yeah. um, but this is a new administration. I think there's, there's some idealism in myself and my colleagues 
that precludes any barriers to getting things, serious things like this done. That goes back again to people having patience, whether it's you having right. patience as, a, as an elected official or your constituents or parents having patience. So um, in terms of your representation of your district, are you finding that there were things that people were really crying out for that spoke to you during the campaign that you're working to implement you know, now that people are really craving? Is there, you know, again, I know you know, public safety things or unemployment, you know, I know you spoke about a lot during right. your campaign. So Under, and not only just unemployment, but underemployment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one of the things, again, that's tremendous for me as, an in, as a freshman is that we've had this big looming thing of uh, unemployment and underemployment, and then I get to chair the small business committee. So I have, the way my brain thinks, I'm able to tie all of that in, work with my small businesses, build capacity within them to hire more. So, so removing barriers isn't just because that's good business, but it's good business because if you remove barriers, then people can hire more people. Like it's, it's this very simple formula. So when I look at unemployment and underemployment, I know that the solution is supporting our small businesses. The, the, I believe what the president believes, which is that uh, we're not going to write this economy through big business. We're going to write the economy through small business. So, so what's, what's an example of a barrier that a small business is facing that you think you know is, is removable or adjustable? Well, the uh, the overage of fines and fees. Mm -hmm. um, Which is you, the mayor has spoken quite a bit about. Absolutely, but we haven't quite seen. Well, what we so as a testament to the commitment of this new regime to mitigate that, the office of mental, the office of health and mental health, and their letter grading system has reduce some of their fines and fees. There used to be a very arbitrary way that a restaurateur would get fined. So you would get a range from 200 to 2,000 depending on the judge you got mm -hmm. for, the, for a similar offense. They've, stand, they've begun to standardize the fees associated with particular offenses as well as put a cap on uh, the maximum that you can be fined. They've brought that down to $600 and they're standardizing. So I, I love that because if uh, DOHMH can do that and use that as a tool for small business growth. Every other agency, DCA, so I'm looking at the uh, Department of Consumer Affairs, which is a regulatory agency, and saying, hey, you know, this, this is good business. So, so if you do this, more businesses will exist. They'll build more capacity and they'll hire more. So I think that there is an understanding that that's the right way to go. And I'm just going to keep singing that song until people you know, have had enough of it. I'm just going to keep pushing the agenda, which is, so that's just one good way. So a small business, um, if they don't believe that they, small businesses believe that there's a cost for doing business that unfortunately includes paying these excessive fines and fees and taxes. They're factoring that into their They're overheads. Right Absolutely. Now. So when, a, when an inspector comes and hits them with a $1,500 fine, you know, they just kind of chalk it up to, to doing business, and we say, no, that's not good business. Now, we understand that there are some health-related fines and fees that shouldn't be mitigated. We don't want consumers uh, at risk for, for, um, for uh, people being egregious in, in the way that they pre prepare food or things like that. But then there's signage that people are getting, that small business are getting killed for. So those kinds of things we want standardized, and we've already begun the conversation. So I, this is not a campaign speech. Like, we've met with every Chamber of Commerce president, all of the uh, Business Improvement District uh, exec board, to really find out on the ground what's going on and how, as, a, as the chair of small business, I can help. So our, our um, slogan, which is to do no harm, We've really enacted that by, by being proactive and meeting with the stakeholders, the key stakeholders, as well as the Bodega Association, the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce. Like, I think in my short period of time, all, a, a great degree of the stakeholders in small business will tell you I've at least had a, a conference call with them because it's that, it's that important. And so one of the biggest things you're hearing is the fine situation. Absolutely. Any other highlights of those conversations? Fine, it, well, it's fines and it's the uh, indiscriminate way that the various inspectors come out and do their job uh -huh. with, with relatively limited or no oversight.